Hi everyone, this is Laura Hammock from the Marble Jar channel. Today's video is the first of two about the digital app that my public library uses, Libby. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about the pluses and minuses of checking out digital media from the library. In the next video, I will do a tutorial of the app. So I love libraries. The library in my hometown was this elaborate old building with a copper dome, and I still think of it as one of my very, very favorite places on earth. I used to take out stacks and stacks of book as a books as a teen. Probably tells you a little bit about the kind of teen I was. My ADHD has always made keeping track of books and their due dates kind of difficult, but I figured all of my late fees were just good donations to an important public service. That said, I was thrilled with the introduction of online library book renewal. So I have a weekly task that reminds me to go online and renew my, my library books. And up until pretty recently, I was at the library just about once a week to drop books off and pick others up. So what changed? I started using the Libby app. So I live in Fairfax County, Virginia, and we have a huge library system with over 20 branches. They have physical books and books on tape to loan, obviously, but they also have a ton of digital books and audiobooks. And the way they loan out these electronic resources is through a partnership with Overdrive, which is a digital media clearinghouse and distributor. So Libby is the app that Overdrive provides to help you access your library's digital collection. So first, let's quickly talk about the positives automatic returns. So the app automatically returns your digital book at the end of your loan period. So no late fees, no lost books, no having to hoof it over to the library to beat the deadline. It just returns the book automatically. Digital books. So I've gotten to the point that I really prefer reading digital books over physical books. And I know that there are haters on this take, but I have my reasons. The problem is I'm cheap. I only buy books that I know I will read again, so mostly nonfiction. Otherwise, I really try to get everything else from the library for free. The Libby app allows me to have the best of both worlds, both digital and free. Transfer to Kindle. And even better, instead of requiring that I read the book within the Libby app, for many books I can choose instead to have it sent to my Kindle. So I prefer this since my Kindle is light, it has long battery light, it's easy to see in the sunlight, and it doesn't have an LCD display, which can be bad for your eyes and your natural sleep cycle, and I'm already super familiar with the controls. Audiobooks. So I am in the car a lot, and I always have either an audiobook or a podcast playing at all times. I feel I can get twice as much reading done if I listen to audiobooks regularly. Unfortunately, you do have to listen to audiobooks through the Libby app, and I don't like the interface quite as much as the Audible interface, but it will do. And the slight aggravation is totally worth the $15 that I would normally have to pay. So now let's discuss the negatives. First, titles are not available. So all of my negatives have to do with the fact that there is too much demand and not enough supply. Complaint number one is that I want every book in my library to be available digitally and through audiobook, and of course that's just not the case. So there's a limited subset of books that are available, but they are all free. So I have to remember that each one is a bonus. Number two, takes forever. So even if Libby has the book that you are looking for, and particularly if it is a popular book right now, it can take months to become available. So for example, I have a hold on Michelle Obama's book, which I placed two months ago, and I still have approximately 13 more weeks to wait. So obviously if you wanna read a book right away, this would not be your preferred method. And number three, drop everything. So once your book does become available, you had better be ready to drop everything else and read it right away. Digital books in my library system can only be checked out for three weeks. So at the end of three weeks, they are automatically returned. Sure, if no one else has a hold on the book, you can recheck it out, but chances are there is gonna be people waiting for it. So using my last example, Michelle Obama's book has 1,820 people waiting for it. So if I don't finish that in three weeks, I have to put myself at the end of the hold queue and then wait another like five months to read the rest. So drop everything else and read it fast when it, once it is checked out to you. Okay, that's it. You'll have to evaluate whether you think the good outweighs the bad. For me, I can only reserve certain kinds of books through Libby. I don't use it for books for my book club since those books are usually both popular and time sensitive. And many of the books that I want aren't available digitally at all. But what I like to do is find authors whom I really like and put holds on a bunch of their books. That's why it's a nice surprise when they are checked out to me. And if I can't get to it in three weeks because I've got other stuff I'm reading or I have too much going on, 
then I just put a hold back on it and wait for the next opportunity. Okay, join me in my next video when I take you through a tutorial of the Libby app. Comments are always appreciated and thanks for watching.